you. Candidates discuss the issues as they prepare for Hyannis Fire District elections in May. It's budget week for the House of Representatives next week on Beacon Hill, and senior center volunteers are recognized at the annual luncheon. It's Thursday, April 23rd, 2015. I'm Sarah Colvin. The Hyannis Fire District is holding elections on May 19th. This week, the Greater Hyannis Civic Association held a candidates night in which candidates for moderator and commissioner appeared and discussed issues of importance for the future of the district. The evening began with moderator candidates. First to speak, Town of Barnstable Special Projects Coordinator Len Gobiel. Um, I've always been dedicated to try and help the people of my community. And as I say, I've been here a long time and I've helped a lot of people. And I was lucky enough to uh, find a uh, young woman who said, yes, I'll marry you. And she was born here in Hyannis, and we have been here ever, almost ever since. And it's been a wonderful opportunity. Uh, my qualifications, town meeting representative. When we had a representative form of government, when we had an open town meeting, I was always at the open town meetings. Um, and uh, after I um, graduated, we came back, and um, after I retired, I uh, went to the town manager and I said, I'm retired, and, and uh, i got to have something to do. And he said, ah, i got a job for you, special projects coordinator. And I am today a special projects coordinator, and I never know from day to day what I'm going to be doing when I walk into this Challenger board. Deb Crow, former chair of the Hyannis Water Board, was next. I've always believed that when you've been blessed, as I have been, you have to give back. And so I do a lot of volunteering, always have been. I've had many moderator experiences for candidates' nights. I've done that for many, many years in many different scenarios. Um, I've also moderated IT strategic planning um, sessions. Those are the ones where the doctors want the money for technology, but they also want to have the best technology. IT system they can get. So it's a little bit challenging right out of the box. And I've also done a lot of, um, okay, and I've also done a lot of um, moderating of um, panels for my professional organization. It's a professional, I was on their national board, about 14,000 members. So again, um, I have a lot of experience in moderating, co resolving conflict and in serving my community. The longtime moderator who served for more than 20 years decided not to run for another term. Four candidates are vying for a spot on the Board of Commissioners. They were asked about their priorities for the district. First, candidate Chris Kehoe, who serves as chair of the Hyannis Area Chamber of Commerce Board. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I, I do believe that, uh, you know, down, down here there's a couple of questions about Proposition 2.5. Um, you know, yes, I would absolutely work to stay within 2.5. However, fi as we know, fire districts aren't mandated to do that. Um, anywhere we can save money. Uh, is where I would be looking and, and saving money without compromising. Uh, y you know, you can be penny wise and pound foolish and uh, um, save money, but you're getting a, a bad product. Um, so make sure the dollar goes where it should go. Next, candidate Laura Cronin. She's the chair of Barnstable's Comprehensive Financial Advisory Committee. Uh, first and foremost is to uh, fix the repairs on the existing facility. There's a lot of efforts going on right now uh, with the Board of Commissioners. Um, on some of the existing repairs on the existing facility that can be done. Uh, the money's been available, is available and approved, and a lot of that effort is going on. And if that effort is still going on by the May 19th vote, that would be the number one priority to make sure that those things get addressed first and foremost and, and not lose traction on Candidate that. Victor Scandy next shared his priorities. We need to restore confidence in the department, in the commission, in the department administration. My third priority is for the commission to assume leadership. At many of the meetings uh, we hear, I've been from the chief, I've been waiting for leadership. That's the role of the commission, to provide leadership. We have the executive powers, we're the chief policy-making agency, 
we're responsible for directives and guidelines. And candidate Demetrius Atsilas, former second Barnstable state representative. The most important thing really that, that I'll, I'll do at the very beginning is that your public safety needs are met and they can only be met by having the best trained personnel that the Highness Fire Department can have. So that means we have to continue to appropriately fund the Highness Fire Department to meet their needs and their needs ultimately are your needs. We want that response time. Uh, you, you don't, um, uh, you know, they're, they're the, the first persons that's going to walk through your door when you need it. So first and foremost, to maintain uh, the appropriate staffing and level of education uh, for our fire personnel. Fire district elections will be held on May 19th at the Hyannis Youth and Community Center. You can watch the, candidate, the Candidates Night video in its entirety online at town.barnstable.ma.us. Well, Beacon Hill will be abuzz with activity next week as legislators work on amendments and earmarks related to the House budget. 5th Barnstable State Rep. Randy Hunt joined me on this morning's Barnstable This Morning to discuss the process. We're going to be discussing what was presented to us by the House Ways and Means, and that is for fiscal 2016, which ends on June 30th, 2016, a $38 billion budget with a B, $38 billion. And um, what happens during the week is we try and wrestle down what we should do with the more than 1,000 amendments that have been filed by the House members. And uh, so it's going to be an exciting week. There's no question about it. House Budget Week begins on Monday. Legislators will be working nearly round the clock to complete the job by week's end. Well, this Wednesday afternoon, the Barnstable Senior Center celebrated its volunteers with a special luncheon. Town manager Tom Lynch stopped by. He announced that thanks to savings from the Senior Center's solar installation, funding is available for extra staff. Well, volunteers really help Barnstable march on and move forward. If we didn't have the volunteers that we have in this room doing the things that we do, the Senior Center wouldn't function nearly as well as it does. Um, I know... The crafters do great things. I come over and buy things at Christmas time, and, and I know how many others, and some of you have been thanked already about van drivers and other things uh, that you do, and we just, as I say, couldn't get along uh, without that. I came in today and I saw all the um, solar panels that are uh, you know, generating energy and, and funding for us right now, and I wanted to say that earlier in, in, the, in the year, Two of your volunteers, uh, Paul and Gary, came to see us along with, uh, uh, with Maddie and Lynn just to talk about how we might be using some of that funding. And uh, we thought that since one of the goals of the Senior Center was to do more outreach out to um, you know, isolated seniors, that we would use that money to increase funding for some workers here so we could allow that to continue. So you have volunteers that are advocating for you on a lot of different uh, levels. Some are doing it at the policy level and the budget level, like I uh, just mentioned. We appreciate hearing that. We always try to uh, respond. Senior Center Director Madeline Noonan told the group that a new Nissan LEAF electric vehicle is being added to the Silver Express fleet to continue the center's green efforts. Well, don't forget to tune in to our daily live news program, Barnstable, this morning. Tomorrow's Fun Friday show will spotlight an artist coming to Bismarck Park this summer. We'll talk with Director of Sir Leisure Services, Patty Machado, and HYCC General Manager, Joe Izzo, plus our weekly Marine and Environmental Affairs segment. Barnstable, this morning, begins at 7 a.m. right here on Channel 18. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Colvin.